Georgia at Tennessee. The dogs go to Neyland Stadium. Down by the river, Mason. Down by the river. I don't know what the weather's going to be in Neyland. That's maybe something that we should look at. It gets mighty cold down on the river over there. Uh, I have personally been to the stadium, and I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be a raucous environment. Um, Tennessee out of the SEC East race or not, they will be loud for this game. Um, very, very little doubt about that. Tennessee is coming off. I, I, I mean, I just have to honestly say, I mean, and I think all Tennessee fans would probably agree, an embarrassing loss last week to Missouri. Now, personally, and we, we've reacted to this, and you can go watch our reactions from, from earlier this week, but um, I don't think it's is as embarrassing as Tennessee fans probably feel like it is. Uh, Missouri's a really good team, okay? And I think it kind of snuck up on everybody. I don't think a lot of people have accepted the fact that Missouri is a good football team this year because it's Missouri. We all want to think, and I know Tennessee fans are definitely guilty of this because y'all have whooped up on Missouri really like nobody else has over the last few years. Um, uh, you know, even I would even say maybe running it up a little bit, uh, um, as some would say, last year. So Tennessee comes into this thing, and and I'm going to tell you right off the top, the, fir the first thing that I'm questioning is what? where's the want-to level with this team? Where's the motivation? Because last week, I would have thought the motivation would have been there. Tennessee played Missouri before Georgia played Ole Miss. So Tennessee didn't know what was going to happen in Georgia Ole Miss. So they really honestly had everything to play for. The mm -hmm. SEC East was on the line in their minds going into that game. And they got absolutely thumped. So now I'm wondering what the thought process will be. So Tennessee fans will be the first one to tell you that this team is a whole lot better at home than they've been on the road uh, on under Josh, Josh Heupel. I mean, it, it's stark. Uh, the, the comparisons are stark. Um, this is a, a, a different team than what we saw last year as well. Um, and, and those numbers are just elevated at home. They, they really are. But this is a top 10 team in rushing yards for the year, 213.2 uh, per game. Uh, 2,100 plus on the year, uh, average in 5.6 yards per rush, and they've got 17 rushing touchdowns, which that that's something that we'll kind of talk about here in just a second, the rushing touchdowns. But uh, this, this offense is 55th in passing yards per game, 241.6. You know, speaking of that Missouri game, I felt like Milton actually played a pretty decent game uh, whenever they played Missouri last week. So, Maybe maybe he's, you know, kind of trending up a bit, but um, the run game is what couldn't get going. And, Mason, you and I have talked about this on this show at length multiple times. This Tennessee team has to run the ball for 250 yards. We, we came up with this, or I did. I, I mean, I, I won't put your name on it in case it doesn't come through this weekend, then you don't look <laughs> like an idiot, right? Um, I appreciate but that. So far, it seems that if Tennessee doesn't have a very high success rate at running the football, they're not going to win the game. Right. And I think that's reflective of the fact that you're not going to put this game on Joe Milton's shoulders. I, he hasn't played a complete game and carried this team to a win. I haven't seen it yet. Um, so, now, I mean, I'm not. that's not to say he's had a horrible year. 65% completion. Uh, 2,284 yards, 16 touchdowns, five interceptions, uh, 301 yards rushing, 4.4 uh, yards per carry there. So he's been productive, but definitely not at the level uh, that we saw last year. So with all that being said, if you're going to look for a spot on this Georgia defense that's a little bit soft, soft, uh, maybe, maybe it's the uh, – the Russian defense. What What are your thoughts on this one? And and we'll kind of circle back around on my pick here. What What are your thoughts as the um, this defense matches up with this high powered rushing offense and tandem of running backs that's really really good for Tennessee? Yeah, I you know I like Georgia a lot in this game. Uh, obviously, they're a ten point favorite for a reason, right? Um, but outside of that, I, 
I like them a little bit more than 10 points, I think, and, and I'll explain why. Um, you know, they're coming off of one of the most impressive wins on the season, not just for Georgia, but for college football as a whole. Uh, you know, it, it was a, a big win against I, I get it. It's a top 25 or excuse me, a top 10 Ole Miss team, um, which I obviously have some skepticism about. I don't know that they're necessarily a top 10 team, uh, but they did beat them 52 to 13. They're a good team and, and, and Georgia beat them for 52 to 13. Um, very impressive on both sides of the football there. I thought Carson Beck looked as good as he has all season. Um, Lad McConkey is healthy. Brock Bowers is back. Uh, Amarius Mims, the the right tackle, is back. They're you know first round offensive lineman. Um, offensively, they are are really clicking on all cylinders and uh, look like one of the hottest teams in college football. Uh, defensively, which you mentioned, they are a little bit banged up in some spots. Excuse me, cornerback uh, Julian Humphreys went out last week with an arm injury uh, after really having one of his best games in his career uh, against Missouri. Yeah. And um, he's been getting more more snaps lately in place of Everett, who um, has kind of struggled at times against the pass. And and if you if you look at Georgia, they have really the best secondary by by most people's standards um, in the country. So you got to find a weak link if you're if you're an offensive um, you know coordinator for the for the opponent you've got to find a weak link and 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 for teams that's been Everett so he's been getting kind of gashed a little bit here and there um, I, I say gashed he he's played well but uh, again for Georgia's secondary he's definitely the weakest link right so so Humphreys was kind of that guy that was coming in and and kind of you know, giving him some, some rest. And he's been, he, he was, he was playing really well. Humphreys was, um, mm -hmm. so it, it's tough to see him go out. Um, but you know, they also saw JDJ go out, Jamon Dumas Johnson. They, they call him pop. Uh, he's their, their leader. He's their vocal leader, the mid, uh, middle linebacker who started last season. This is his second season as a starter, third year in the program. And, um, he went out against Missouri. So he, he's likely going to be out of this game as well. Um, five in steps, five star freshman CJ Allen. Man, he um, good. he looked really good. He looked really good. And, and I, I think that, I think that people are seeing what I had already been seeing from, from CJ Allen, right? He's that Georgia runs, you know, two inside linebackers in most of their packages, but they rotate a third. And, and CJ Allen's been that rotational piece. It was Channing Tindall a couple of years ago, right? Or Quay Walker, to, you know, depending on the game plan. Um, and, and now CJ Allen as a true freshman has been that guy from the first game. I mean, it's been really impressive to see a true freshman do what he's done. So I've been seeing that all season. Now he's getting the start. Well, Georgia didn't just say, well, now since we're down a middle linebacker, we're, we're just going to, we're just going to run two middle linebackers. They had to bring someone else in. So who do they bring in? It's five star, another five star, believe it or not, you know, for Georgia, another five star middle linebacker, uh, true freshman, Raylan Wilson. Um, and and he, I thought he played pretty good. He, you know, he got burned a couple times early. They started attacking him as soon as they saw him in. Uh, but I think that he really settled in late and and ended up um playing a pretty good game, you know, for his, his first, uh, real game, getting any, any sort of uh playing time. He's also had some injuries this year. So, uh, but, but seen some snaps, you know, um, then on the defensive line, uh, TID Tyrion Ingram Dawkins, is another guy that I'd like to highlight on defense. He's been battling injury and, um, you know, played in the Florida game actually, then was off last week. And then, Got back in. Um, excuse me. He was off against Missouri. Got back in uh, against Ole Miss and and had a really good game. Um, he's he's somebody that I think has offered a lot of run support for Georgia up the middle. And you yeah. mentioned that that's that's an area that that most teams can attack. I don't think they're going to be able to attack up the middle at least. So between him and Christian Miller is another guy who's stepping up as a uh, I believe he's a a, a sophomore. I know he's in his second year. I think he's a, a sophomore, but um, both of those those guys have been playing well. So I think up the middle, there's there's going to be trouble if if Tennessee tries to run up the middle. Now they have a really good offensive line, so we'll see. That's going to be a good matchup to watch. But if there is a weakness on Georgia's defense, it's that that edge, that containing edge. Mm -hmm. um, that's an area where Georgia has struggled, um, and you know Chaz Chambliss has kind of done what he can, but I think he's 
he's playing at his limit athletically. Um, and, and I think that he's just kind of, um, you know, eating some space in, in there, but, but maybe, uh, maybe missing some assignments and things like that. So, um, and then on the other side, you got Michael Williams, who is playing a little bit more inside. So they're, they're kind of coupling him with an outside linebacker a lot of, a lot of times. And, that could be Jalen Walker in, in passing situations, but uh, against the run, it's you know you're really just not seeing a, a lot of a lot of strength at least on the outside. They're not they're not doing a great job containing. Um, but moving over to to Tennessee, you know it it seems like we've covered Tennessee more than any other team this season. Like <laughs> they've had a lot of uh, uh, really good SEC matchups this year, and oh, yeah. um, have actually done a pretty good job all season outside of the. Florida and Missouri games. Um, I, I know, you know, Vols fans maybe thought that this would be a year that they beat Bama again and beat Georgia, win the SEC. So, you know, I guess by those standards, they may not have had a good season. But I think that we saw some things this year that have, um, you know, proven promising for the Vols. Um, you know, first, they, they've been much improved on defense. I think that everybody would say, uh, that they're much better on defense, specifically against the run. Yep, they're a top twenty-five defense against the run, and and, and that's including the two hundred and five yards that Schrader put on them last week. Um, they're still a really good, uh, effective team against the run. And and second, if you know, if you ask me, I, I think Joe Milton is not a good enough quarterback to run Heupel's system, and and we can debate that. But my point is that they have the talent in Nico Imalieva, I hope I said that right, on the roster uh, set to take over the, the next team or set to take over the team next season as well. Um, couple him with a five-star that's coming in and wide receiver Mike Matthews next year and hope that you can get a similar rushing attack and uh, rushing attack and pass protection and then sprinkle in a defense that seems to be improving. And, and all of a sudden, I mean, Tennessee, they, they really have something to look forward to next year. Now, this is not a preview for next year, right? This is a preview for the next game. Um, we'll get into the previews, you know, this summer. So tune back in uh, this summer. We'll, 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 we'll give you a real preview of, of Tennessee. But I, I really just wanted to give the Tennessee fans some hope because um, I, I, I don't feel like they have much of a shot in this game. Um, the recipe to beat Georgia since Kirby stepped in has been to uh, beat them over the top. You're, you're not just going to you're not just going to line up and run the football against Georgia and beat this team. Um, you're just not. I mean, even if that is their weakness, okay, Georgia plays into their weakness a little bit, and they say, hey, we'll give up a little bit on the ground, but you're not going to beat us on the ground, right? We'll we'll give up 150 yards, but that's not going to be what beats us, right? We're going to shut you down with our secondary, and you may only throw for 100 yards, you know? So I think that Georgia, as a defense, plays complementary to whatever the game plan is. Um, and then defensively, you know, Tennessee will be lucky to stop Georgia from scoring three times. Um, and, and that's not a shot at Tennessee. That's just really how good Georgia has been all season. I don't think that they can keep up offensively uh, with that kind of firepower, you know, and, and I, I, I just, I smell trouble for, for Tennessee. I think it's going to be a tough game. I don't know how much they're really going to be in this game. They're all, already out of the SEC East race. Um, and you know, they lost miserably to Missouri last week. I, I'm kind of, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking that there's a little bit of quit in Tennessee, right? Um, I, I guess is, is my point, but, um, for my prediction, you know, the over in this game has actually hit or excuse me for the, the over for Georgia has hit six out of the last seven times and three out of the last four for Tennessee. Um, when I'm looking at this from a, you know, from a, an over under perspective, I think I think that it's a little bit high for this game. So I think that that Vegas is starting to course correct. Um, I do think that it will go over, but it's I, I think that the score prediction for me is going to be uh, forty one to twenty in Georgia's favor, which is a little bit over the fifty nine and a half is where I think the line's at right now. But that's too close for comfort for me. I like the play of um, you know Georgia and the ten points. Um, I've actually already bet this just in case it moves. So you may want to get ahead of that if you're, if you're into, into that kind of stuff. But I think that that's the safer bet. I think Georgia wins by about 20 points in this game. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the, the 
offensive line. Tennessee's got a really, really good offensive line. Um, you know, they they um, protect the quarterback very well. Um, they run block very well, obviously, and only allowed 16 sacks for the year. Um, I think that Tennessee is going to be it, – it, it, they're just going to let everything hang out. And, and what I mean by that is there's nothing really to lose in this one. Yeah. Um, I think they're going to be running Joe Milton pretty hard this game. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if we saw some read option type stuff. I think Tennessee would be more than happy to come out here and just try to murk this game up uh, and just and try to, you know, I, I think they know that they are probably don't stand much of a chance to outright win this game. Uh, but if they could if they could lose it 30 to 20, I think they would be really, really, really happy. Um, and I think that would be a, a successful, you know, uh, damage control. Um, you, you talked about this defense. They allow 113 yards per game. Um, but we've seen on two occasions, Florida and Missouri just absolutely push them around. And Missouri had a lot of success off the edge, just like they did against Georgia. It was that halfback stretch play, man. Yeah. And it's just when it's ran well, it's all damn near impossible to defend. I mean, and, and Florida, Florida ran a lot of that stuff as well um, and had a lot of success. Georgia just came off a game in which they ran the ball for 300 yards against Ole Miss. Um, wouldn't be surprised uh, if Tennessee backs everybody up, says, hey, we're, we're going to keep everything in front of us uh, and let's see you run the ball. You're not, we're not going to let Carson Beck just, just throw all over us. And, Hey, and you know what? Carson Beck may still throw all over them um, because this is an offense that takes what's given to them. So um, maybe maybe we see this one uh, come with an under after the, like you said, Vegas has corrected. Maybe maybe we see kind of a, a snap back to, to reality on that. Um, but I like Georgia minus the 10. I really like it. Um, for cautionary purposes, I don't know if I'm taking 10 and a hook. I don't know if I'm taking 11. Hmm. I don't know. It's a weird number. It's a yeah. we it's just a weird number. I don't like 10 and a hook because like I said, man, Georgia could very well win this thing 30 to 20. Yeah. And run for 350 yards and the game's never really close. But you know, it's within that 10 point spread there. So, um give me the dogs. I I like them. I I just I think that was super emotional last week. Let's see how they how uh, if, if this is a championship caliber team, they're going to come out and play this game just like they played last week. It's just another game on the schedule. Let's see where this team's head's at, uh, but give me the dogs as this team is really, really starting to heat up, it seems.